What's going on guys, Dylan DeJesus here. Thank you for joining us for another video. And today, well today we got a lot to share with you guys. First off, the DCF Experience, our first custom sneaker course, is officially sold out. I can't believe it guys. It's only been a week and a half since we announced it. The feedback and response from you guys has been absolutely insane for it. To fill up 20 spots this quickly, just just unreal we can't say thank you guys enough for that but today for today's video we wanted to talk to you guys about airbrushing more specifically maybe you're looking to upgrade your airbrushing game looking to take it to the next level looking to move past just base coating onto your shoes and so we wanted to walk you through some of our favorite tips and tricks to really help you get the most out of using your airbrush so now let's go ahead and dive into our six favorite airbrush hacks So the first technique that we're gonna be talking about is utilizing the backflow technique. Now, if you've never heard of this or you're not too familiar with utilizing the airbrush, this is something that really comes in handy when you're trying to mix together colors directly in your airbrush. So in order to do this, all you need to do is take something like a paint towel or potentially just your finger, place it firmly up against the front nozzle of your airbrush. And what this is gonna do once you pull down on the trigger is it's preventing any paint or air from getting out the front end of your airbrush. So it's forcing everything within the paint cup to mix it Itself together. Now this tip really comes in handy if you're trying to do something like the middle bar technique to create a super clean even gradient. And to do that you're going to mix together equal parts of the two colors you're trying to blend together. In this case we're going to mix together a blue and a green, mix those together with the backflow technique directly into our airbrush, and spray a middle bar over the area where the two colors are meeting together. After we've done that, we're gonna take both of the original colors we were trying to blend together, the blue and the green, and work on blending those directly into our middle bar. And this is how you're gonna achieve that super clean, seamless gradient look. Our second technique that we're gonna be talking about is creating contrast within your artwork. This is really gonna come in handy anytime you're trying to create a cool background for your project and you're utilizing something like reusable airbrush stencils. So a quick and simple way to do this is take the base color for whatever your project is that you're working on and then we wanna create a lighter and darker variation of that color to add contrast in the image. So in this example, I'm gonna take light gray, mix in a little bit of black, mix them together with our backflow technique that we've talked about and then now I have a nice darker gray that I can spray through the airbrush stencil. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat these same exact steps by mixing in a little bit of white into my light gray and now I have a lighter shade of the light gray that I can then spray through this same airbrush stencil. And now I have a lighter and darker variation of my base color itself mixed into my project and this is what's really gonna give it some life and some contrast that I can then build on top of also. Technique number three is gonna be on how you can intentionally create a very cool splatter effect with your airbrush and a popsicle stick. What you're gonna do is angle the popsicle stick back towards yourself near the front of your airbrush, and this is how you can achieve that really cool tiny splatter look that you very commonly see in a lot of galaxy effects. Our next technique is gonna be on how you would do a lightning effect with your airbrush and then how you could also change the color of that lightning. So the first thing that I'm gonna recommend doing is pulling up some reference images of lightning just so you can really get a feel for how it's supposed to look and not only that, but how the lightning itself actually moves. So now what we're gonna do is take a little bit of white airbrush paint and just start to ghost in the path that you want the lightning itself to travel. After we've done that, we're gonna actually go in and hand paint the lightning streak itself. And now for a cool stylized effect, you could change the color of this lightning by taking some really thinned out color of your choice airbrush paint and just lightly ghosting this around the entire path and the streak itself. Sure. 
Our next technique is gonna be on creating a vignette around your project. The way to do this is just take a little bit of black paint and we're lightly gonna mist around the outer edges of our project. What we're essentially doing here, since we're darkening the edges, everything inside of those can pop now a little bit more in my opinion. This is something that I utilize all of the time, specifically in my style of artwork. It really gives it that added punch and now I'm able to achieve that really cool dark grungy look. And our last little hack is going to be on achieving what is called the starburst airbrush look. Now this is something that you guys have probably seen before, but in order to achieve this, what we wanna do is take a larger white dot that we've already painted and lightly spray in a little bit of a glow behind that dot. Now what we wanna do is take something that we have a nice clean edge, whether we're talking about a piece of tape or an old business card, a piece of paper, whatever you wanna use, we're just gonna go ahead and spray some perpendicular lines right behind our glow dot. And now we have a really cool stylized glowing star look. And so for our last little tip for you guys, I wanna just go ahead and talk about some kind of everyday airbrush products and everyday kind of tabletop airbrush stuff that we use. Starting off with our airbrush, we use a Badger Patriot 105. It is an airbrush that you can get for under $100, so it's a great budget idea, and it's something that I've been using for years. Then another thing that you might have seen us working at is the Master Brand Airbrush Booth. It's perfect if you're gonna be airbrushing indoors. It has a hose in the back that you can connect to a window and ventilate and send all those fumes out so that you're not breathing that in constantly and you're gonna keep your work area a little bit cleaner. Then as far as paint storage goes, uh, I like these little bottles that I like to take some pre-made mixtures and keep inside with this little easy pour cap. Super easy to use, I've tested out a lot of other ones. Anything that has this type of nozzle, it tends to kind of clog up too easily for me. Same with these, so I really love these and I'll show you my paint drawer. I have a ton of Angelus paints pre-made. What I do for those mixtures is I take about 65% paint, mix in about 25% too thin, and then 10% duller. And then, so that's what you'll see me have in all of these pre-made bottles of any Angelus color. So I never recommend pouring Angelus straight from the bottle into your airbrush. It's a little bit too thick. It's definitely gonna clog up your airbrush and not run as smooth. So that's why a product like Too Thin is perfect. And then I always prefer a matte look to my paint, so that's why I mix in the duller also. Before I pour any of those pre-made mixtures into any of these storage containers, I also like to run that through a kitchen little mesh strainer. This is gonna catch any old gooped up paint or anything like that so that you have some nice thinned out paint to keep stored in here and be airbrush ready. As far as swapping out colors or being done with your excess paint, I always like to spray it into a little tin like this. These are perfect because you can also store the airbrush right onto here, so this is a great tool to have. And then for swapping out colors or being done with a project, I like to use the Angelus Brush Cleaner. But if you just wanna have your kind of own pre-made mixture, you can just use something with water and then some type of cleaner like Fabuloso you can mix in here. Uh, you could water it down with about 75% water or so. And then I like to leave a little bit of this type of mixture in my airbrush overnight just so that it's not gonna clog up. So once you're done, you've cleaned out all of your color and your paint inside, just so that nothing's gonna dry up overnight, I'll leave a couple drops in the airbrush once I'm done. All right, there you have it guys. Hopefully you learned something new today. Hopefully these are some tips and tricks that you can start applying to your own custom shoes. As always, I really look forward to seeing all the stuff that you guys create. Continue to share it with us, whether it be on Instagram, sending it to us in an email. It's always cool to see what you guys are able to take from the videos and then apply it to your own projects. We love seeing that from you guys. So if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead, give this video a like, make sure you're subscribed, have those post notifications turned on, and we'll see you guys in that next video.